Welcome, Salar here. I hope you guys are doing well today. Um, I have to do that uh, message for the new year, reading the energies of the tarot. Um, I haven't forgotten. I still am piecing together some of the information. I'm not trying to force it or push it because there seems to be more that wants to come forth than what I have yet. Um, I'm not going to put a time on it when I'm ready to, to do it. I'll do it. Maybe it will even be today. I don't know. But in the meantime, I've got other messages coming through. There's an, I probably will be doing two readings today unless all of these messages kind of work together. We'll see. I'm going to use the cards as a tool to help me to piece. I have like always get pieces of the puzzle, excuse me, with my eye. I always get pieces of the puzzle. Um, and the cards help me to kind of fill in the gaps kind of thing. And that's what my readings are here to, to help you do too, to fill in those gaps. Um, so I hope that you do find them to be helpful. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm starting off with the Soul's Purpose deck. I was, I was uh, getting ready for this reading and there were three songs that came through. The first song was Charlie Puth, Attention. I used to love that song. Uh, the second song was uh, Shea Sager, Last Time. Um, and the third song was George Michael, Amazing. And there's something that's happened three times, or maybe twice, and this is the third time. But it's not happening again. Because whatever it is that's been, was happening, whatever thing has happened to you on three occasions or two occasions prior, and this is the third attempt, it is, um, it's not going to work anymore because the purpose of it was to disempower you and keep you out of having true and intimate love with another. Um, and really this is to do with romantic love. It could be platonic, but I'm really getting that this is more to do with like a partner in life kind of energy. There's somebody who was very invested in wanting you to be alone, but not only invested in wanting you to be alone, but also wanting you to think that the reason you were alone was because there's something wrong with you. There wasn't. It's that energy again. I mean, this is the energy we're exposing right now in general, like that hand stirring in, in the pot to increase certain realities in other people's lives, controlling the narrative of another person's life for, you know, many reasons. Most of the time, unfortunately, it's for material gain and it's for greed. So something has happened three times, or this is the third time, and... Um, it's not happening again. And the funny thing about it is that whatever tactics the, uh, this person or people or energies used to, to do this in the past, they have not changed their formula. It's like they don't have another formula. And um, it's almost like um, whatever it was that this person, these people, these energies tried in the past, they don't seem to realize that you are not the same person, okay? Um, even, I get the feeling like for some of you, if this is like the third time, even the second time around, it wasn't as, as effective. So if it wasn't, yeah, my candle just literally started to shake. If the second time around, it wasn't as effective and you weren't even as healed then, imagine this third time around and you're in a, much more healed and alert state, but they're coming at you with the same formula. That doesn't really make sense, does it? Doesn't really make sense. And the only thing I can think, the only reason I can think of why they'd be coming at you with a formula is because they're not in touch with spirit. Because people who aren't in touch with spirit use formulas to get certain results over and over again. Um, and don't get me wrong, I, I'm all about science too. So formulas have their place, but not when you're messing with human beings. Um, their, their emotions, their mental realities, their physical realities, there's no formula that can help you figure out somebody um, or to get it right 100% of the time. 
And this is where it, there's something very clinical about this, very clinical and sterile and cold and calculating. Um, some timelines that are coming through for some of you, because for some of you, this has been going on a real long time. The first timeline would be 2000 and 2001. The second timeline would be 2014. And the third timeline is 2017. Two thousand and five. Also, for some of you, so you don't have to align with all of those years. Um, there does seem to be a theme with the year, with the years that numerologically added up to seven. So, for some of you, uh, this was first like enacted upon you in two thousand and five, for example. And now they did it again in 2014. And now we're in 2023. So it's 777 energy. Um, and really what that is giving me is it's something to do with messing with the direction of your divine path, messing with the direction of your chariot, almost oh, stealing the wheels of your chariot. It's like in if this is your message, it's 1943 on my clock, 4 plus 3 is 7, and 19 is the sun, 4 and 3 is emperor and empress energy, and the emperor and the empress are what come together to create the chariot. The chariot energy is the child, the legacy of the emperor and the empress. Stealing the wheels. I feel like in, in those years, whether you are resonating with the 2005, 2014, and 2023, or whether you're resonating with any of the other timelines or years that I gave, it's almost like um, some of you might also have an ancestor who was alive during the Second World War, or 1944 might be of importance to you. 1943, possibly, too. I don't normally read, I'm looking at the numbers on my clock, I don't normally read those as years, but for some reason they had me really stuck on the 1944, and not because of the double four, as always, which is also a very important um, number. You might have been seeing 4-4 four, four a lot recently, which has to do with being protected by angels, being on track, um, but it also has to uh, do with be the beginning of setting a foundation, and um, it can also have a lot to do with uh, with the foundation you're setting. It has to do with uh, your ancestry, whether that's like to do literally with your family and your, your you know, your bloodline, but a lot of the time it, it's, it's not necessarily that. It's actually to do with your divine lineage. Um, so you're very protected right now. There's something um, very ancestral happening, a very, um, it's like your ancestors have been waiting for you to rise into this place. It's like they've always been around you. Maybe you weren't connecting with them in past timelines. And even if you're not resonating with the exact years I gave you, this can still be your story. You don't have to, those messages are for people who need that extra info. Um, but there's something about um, there's something about like you weren't ready before. You weren't ready to take up the mantle of what had to be done. Um, in terms of like some of you, this is what you came here to do in the earth, and it's to do with your divine lineage. This is an energy that's going to continue coming up this year because of the the time that we're in collectively. Um, and it's like there were two occasions for you to do it in the past or other occasions for you to do it in the past, and uh, you weren't successful. And the reason you weren't successful is because a lot of the time you weren't aware. You weren't even aware of the mission. Uh, you weren't aware of the opposition that was hiding in the shadows, trying to keep you uh, from being able to win the race. Um, there's a very real energy that's been coming up recently for me where I've been seeing like people in a race, you know? And, um, and in that race, it's like people have been bet upon, and um, and depending on who um, someone you know a higher up who who 
dwells in the shadows has been like betting on that they, they, they put obstacles in the other one's path kind of thing and um, for some of you this is this is to do with ancestry and the family line there's someone who was put on your path specifically and a lot of the time unfortunately it, it, it happens to be in the same bloodline um, again there is a separation between bloodlines and divine lineage although they can interconnect and you know uh, uh, like what's the word I'm looking for um, yeah interconnect and overlap not everyone in your bloodline is from your divine lineage but some are you get what I'm saying so there's something here about um, having another person who has kind of been placed in competition with you because on the one hand we have uh you know ancestors who like i said they're from a certain divine lineage and they know you're here to do a certain thing in the earth in this time because it's a change of an era it's ascension etc but then there are um, other ancestral entities within bloodlines that don't want to let the old world go because in the old world they were dominating the energy a lot of the time through nefarious means so I say all of that because it's like you've been you've been placed in some kind of situation where you're finally ready to like reclaim something that's part of your divine lineage that's really integral to your ascension and even the ascension of the planet and um, you haven't been able to in the past because you weren't equipped, you weren't ready. And this other energy that was sent to compete for the ancestral entities within your bloodline that wanted to, to keep the earth stuck in, the, in 3D and, and keep, um, keep certain traditions and, and things alive within the family uh, dynamic, um, they may have gone ahead of you in the race. Um, it's been duped. It's been, it's been not duped. It's been, um, is that the word? It's like, it's been, um, I can't think of the word. I'm looking, it's been doctored. It's been, um, it's been messed around with. The variables have been messed around with on both people's paths. Like, Neither person is completely free because both of them, their narratives are being controlled. It's just that one person, the one who may have gotten farther ahead in the race because they had the backing of the old world ancestral entities, they may think that they got farther. They may think that they're free, but they're not. Because for as long as someone else is controlling your narrative, pulling strings in the background, and uh, you're not aware of all of this, you're not free. You know? I, I hope I'm making sense. So, uh, yes, three songs came out. This is something to do with romance also. This definitely has something to do with romance with those songs because it feels like one of the methods that, um, that whoever it is that's playing in the shadows, um, one of the methods that they, they're using right now or wanting to use is uh, the return of some kind of energy or person that, uh, and I want to say more an energy than a person, although for some of you it might be a person, but this is an energy that you've been, you may have battled with in the past that had to do with a person, if that makes sense. So for example, if you uh, have overcome this like codependent need to be with someone else or to be loved or to be admired and because you weren't able to give that to yourself because of your own wounding, right? Oftentimes your inner child wounding. If you have overcome that this time around, in the times past, that's how they got you. They'd send someone on your path who seemed to be like kind of a savior energy, right? Um, and you fell for it because you wanted to be saved. <laughs> you know, you wanted to be quote unquote saved. Um, it's kind of like taking that same um, direction with this energy, whether that person they're going to send on your path is the same person from the time before, or whether it's a person who is embodying this. So pay attention a lot of the time to a lot of the co if, if it's a new person, pay attention to a lot of energies from an, a previous person 
in your life who you may have been in love with but it was still a toxic situation pay attention to a lot of similarities in their narratives and their stories down to the things that they love and their passions and 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 those things i'm not talking about like i'm not talking about like your like if you have a hobby that you like to share with the other person that you are supposed to discount that and everything i'm just saying pay attention to things that are kind of eerie in nature like how similar um, these people are or the things they like pay attention um, that might be a red flag for you that this is um, an op let's see what wants to come out on the soul's journey lesson growth you've grown too much for this you've grown too much for this your consciousness has expanded into a space where you can't even entertain this level of energy and this is what they're not aware of because they don't they don't they're not connected to spirit they don't get the purpose of ascension they don't get how you could change so drastically that's another thing um gratitude i'm thankful for this life and the opportunities that it presents. There's also something here about you having learned how to use, um, how to be a lot more emotionally aware and emotionally intelligent. Like you might be a very, very emotionally open person as a lot of, you know, us are. That's our magic is that we can use our emotions to create your heart chakra is a stargate, right? You may have tripped up on that in the past and you may have willingly walked into situations where you could be victimized because you have such a big heart, right? But it's like there's something about you having um, alchemized this energy to the point where when situations come on your path, you're not quick to want to, well, for one thing, you're not quick to want to save another or to be saved, but for another thing, like even the pain that comes on your path, you're really good at this point at, um, at alchemizing it. You're really good. And when I say alchemizing it, you're really good at taking the lesson and moving on. You're not in a position where like back in the day, you may have gotten stuck in heartbreak or heartache when somebody disappointed you or caused you great grief. Um, it may have gotten you stuck in a lower vibration, but now it's like when, when and if that happens to you, you don't stay stuck. You know how to recognize that everything on your path at this point is for your own up level. It's not happening to you. You're not a victim of your circumstances. You always have the opportunity, no matter what comes your way, to be victorious because you've learned that you're a pilgrim. You're not, you're not, you're, you're, you're passing through. You're here to learn lessons. It's not, um, you're not in a race. <laughs> you know, these, these energies and, and people and situations and factions, they want to put you in a race. And it's almost like, I'm not, you're realizing more and more, you're waking up more and more. I'm not in a race. I'm just here to learn. And if I'm just here to learn, then everything I can embrace with curiosity instead of judgment kind of energy. Um, guilt wants to come in. That's a sacral chakra. Guilt and indecision are making themselves known. So there's something here where, um, they're wanting to play on your guilt <laughs> to cause you to make decisions that aren't um, self-honoring. So especially if uh, the person returning, because this is another energy that was coming through with those three songs, some of you are still involved in like a, um, a karmic situation that you may have energetically removed yourself from. Like you know it's over, but you're not able yet to completely make the shift away physically. Um, or you know it's over, but you're still working it up mentally and emotionally to feel stable enough to, to move on, right? Um, and they sense this too. And um, they're wanting to make you feel guilty to kind of stagnate you so you don't move forward and you don't move on. That's another thing. But it's all interconnected either way um, with this uh, three times energy. Where should I go? Oh, sacred Traveler. Okay. 
So some of the lyrics um, that were sticking out to me, the first song that came through was Attention, Charlie Puth, and it was like, you, you just want attention. You don't want my heart. So it's like whoever they're sending towards you, or if this is a situation where you are still in some kind of like, um, you know, uh, karmic connections that you've already, you know, made peace with the fact that it's kind of over. Um, it's like whoever is coming into your field, whether it's them or whether it's a person, a person returning or whether it's an energy returning in the form of a different person, this person, people, group, whatever, they want your attention. They want you to pay them your attention, okay? Um, and recognize and realize that everything is an energy exchange. What you give attention to, you cause to grow. Um, and there's something about wanting your energy. They're not interested in your heart. They're not interested in your desires. They're not interested in your truth. They're not interested in seeing you rise into your power. They're not interested in that. They're interested in getting something from you energetically. And for some of you with that energy of guilt and indecision, once again, it is sacral chakra and heart chakra related. So it's very much to do with your emotions. With the heart chakra, it's to do with being able to shut you down so you cannot create your own reality in the way that you want it to be created. Because your heart chakra is the stargate that kind of uh, uh, broadcast your true frequency that allows things to come into your field that you want. If your heart chakra is stuck, if it's cleared, if it's under, I mean, if it's stuck, if it's blocked, if it's under somebody else's command because you have these toxic emotional attachments and dynamics still happening that you are overly invested in and paying too much attention to, then what you, you, are, set, you are broadcasting a frequency that is based on that energy. So that's one thing. The other thing would be the sacral chakra and that would have to do with your ability to actually birth something into reality. So whenever you have, for example, a disturbed sacral energy would be a lot of stopping and starting, right? You stop and you start. You can start a project, but you can't see it through. You can begin birthing, but you can't bring it to full term and deliver. And I'm not talking about a physical baby, although for some of you, that could be it too. That could literally be how it's manifested in your life. Because energy is energy. It will, it will um, come through whatever pathway is easiest. So for some of you, it's like your, your projects, your creative endeavors. It's whatever requires your creative energy and your creative touch to bloom and flourish. And for many of you, it's to do with a relationship that's coming towards you because there was something to do here with the not wanting you, I said it at the beginning, to experience real romantic love and partnership, not wanting you to be supported, like really supported. So valiant courage came out in reverse. Take action with passion. Yes, yeah, so somebody is trying to block your passion. And it's really interesting because um, I'm, I'm burning herbs here. And today, um, when I was trying to choose what, what to use as incense, they said to me, use red rose. And red rose, um, which is what I was burning in the beginning, red rose is to do with its root chakra energy, but it's to do with connecting with your, well, well it's to do with connecting with primal energy, but it's also to do with connecting with your passion, with your desire, but it's also that energy of being able to root that into your reality and to make it real. So it's like there's somebody who doesn't want your passion to be rooted. Again, that's, it's very connected to the sacral. The sacral chakra energy and the root chakra energies work together to anchor in and stabilize your timelines. And there's something here about somebody wanting to distort your energy field through however it is that they want to go about it, whether it's through a person, whether it's through, you know, uh, 
throwing energy, it doesn't matter. The most important thing to know is that there's they're trying to distort your energy field in order to cause instability so that you don't, you're not able to to move to this new timeline. They don't want you to have the ability to anchor it in. So they don't want you to be able to feel like you can take action. They don't want you to be passionate about what you do. They want you to doubt where you're going. They want you to doubt yourself. They want you to retreat back into yourself. They want you to turn back to them. This is a this is the uh, <laughs> the lyrics and uh, last time it's like a uh, last time by Shay Sager. It was it was um, if I wake up with you, it will be the last time. And if I still adore you. And it's like a song where she's just like, she's angry at herself for going back. There's something here about you having gone back to this energy uh, time and time again, whether it's a person, a group of people, or whether it's an actual energy. And this energy is this energy of... Um, of, of uh, that has been... You, you've been pushed back into it through guilt. You've been pushed back in it into it by being made to feel bad for wanting to do something for yourself or wanting to move forward. You've been pushed back into it through heavy like attacks against your heart center, you know, um, and that fed energies of like codependency and dependency, thinking that you couldn't do something for yourself or you couldn't excel in this area without someone's help or su false support, right? Um, or for some of you with this like whole romance thing that you are not actually worthy of love because there's some kind of deficit in you that makes you unlovable. It's all a lie, right? Um, things might be feeling really foggy right now. You may be getting clarity on your path from time to time. And it's like you're being told to cling on to that because um, the fogginess is going to come and it's going to go for as long as you're closing out this cycle. But you should know that you are you are exactly where you need to be. And the reason it feels foggy is because it's like you've gone farther on this path than you ever have in the past. Remember I said to you, this is something about this is the third time around you've been on this path before and but you've never gotten this far and because of that it's even foggier it's even more unknown and for many of you this is like a walking away from um like a repeated energy or or or, or you know um a certain circumstance that keeps repeating because of the same energy or a certain dynamic with a person or people because of the same energy. And it's like you've never made it this far um, because you, you weren't confident enough in yourself or you weren't in a healed enough state, but you are exactly where you need to be. Um, you might be having a lot of birds showing up on your path right now. Um, you might want to connect with the energy of birds to show you how to see from a higher perspective and to, um, to be able to also, um, receive messages clearly. Uh, birds are messengers of air, but they also can be of the land and of the water. So, um, utilize the power of the spirit of these animals that are coming into your path because they have knowledge for you, right? So here we have, it looks like, um, it's like either a blue bird or a blue tit. I don't know too much about, um, I've never, like, I haven't worked with those, with blue birds or blue tits, so I don't know. But we also have an owl that's, like, moving ahead. And the owl is actually airborne. And owls are, are keepers of secret knowledge. But owls are also, um nocturnal and they're able to see in the dark and they're able to navigate through the dark and they're able to see um don't they there's something about the way that their eyes work that they're able to see like even almost towards like almost 360 degrees or something i think with owls in other words you are being guided in your darkness it might feel like you don't know where you're going but you are so highly protected you are so highly protected. And this message was coming through. I did a blackout message last week and, and it came through also. It's like a lot of us, a lot of you have been in situations where 
you know, solitude, having to be in, 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 in states of, of, of being alone in order to recover from certain things and energies and attacks. And in that, it can feel lonely at times. It can feel like, you know, nobody really is around to support you, you know, like in, in terms of, um, you know, one-to-one, -one, like, like human support, it can be hard to find it at this level. But understand that at this level you're supposed to be alone because this is actually ultimately how you tune in to those invisible allies that are here to take you across the finish line you have you have uh, um, animal allies plant allies mineral allies you have the power of the earth and the water and the trees you have so much in your corner right now you have ancestors angels archangels certain ascended masters and deities a star family galactic family you are constantly surrounded by a team of witnesses that are also here to help you so you might not see them you probably feel them at times and you should um you should speak to them and reach out to them, like connect with the birds that are being sent to you. Um, even if it's just talking to them or, or leaving an offering um, or feeding them, you know, at the bottom of the deck, we do have taking shelter and the answers are within. And the shelter energy makes me think of home. And again, that's to do with the root chakra energy that I was picking up on when I was uh, reading the energies of this card. And that is that, um, well, first and foremost, your true home as a as a, a being, you know, as a material being, as a physical being, is your body, right? That's your first home. But then wherever you're living, it's an extension of that energy. And so you might be experiencing attacks to your in your home environment or uh, literally um, your body. And with that, it can make you feel unstable. And that can manifest in so many ways, including ill health or fatigue. It's whatever it takes to get you off center. That's the point. But you should know that no matter how much chaos or confusion others want to put on your path or um, project or deflect, um, all you have to do to find your center is to go within and to trust yourself. Somewhere in the past, the reason you didn't make it through the, get, the, the barrier was because you lost faith in yourself and your own ability. And so this is coming through very strongly right now. It's time to trust yourself. Um, Moonology deck. It's time to trust yourself. It's time to trust yourself. For many of you, this is the darkest part of the journey so far. For many of you, this is the darkest part before breakthrough and like real break breakthrough. A lot of the time on this journey, um, we have moments of breaking through a little, breaking through a little, breaking through a little, breaking trail, as it says in one of the cards in this deck. Um, but this time it's like, no, it's a breaking through. You're breaking through this cycle. You have been, this is the third time. Some, for some of you, the fourth time, but for many of you, this is the third time, 2010 on my clock. So yeah, that could have been another year, 2010, which adds up again to three. <laughs> um, for many of you, it's the third time that uh, you have run into uh, these energies that are here to keep you uh, stuck in this cycle. It's the third time this lifetime that you've run into these energies and you have to over, you have to understand and overstand right now that these energies are designed to trap you in fear. So you start to doubt yourself and you turn back on your path and you go back to exactly what it was that was caging you to begin with. But your light is too big. As I say that my candles are shaking. Your light is too big. Your light is too big at this point to be caged. And the thing about it is that these energies that you think you need are fully aware of that, but you might not be. You might not be aware of how much you're shining more than ever because of how you've been made to feel or you know your circumstances. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep on reminding you and myself, <laughs> that the closer you are to breakthrough, 
the greater the energies of resistance within and without are. Waxing moon, the energy is gaining momentum. The energy is gaining momentum. And here we have birds again. Let the birds lead you. For some of you, you have spirit guides that are birds that are wanting to lead you. So for some of you, you might have some kind of connection with the blue avian race also. But you have birds that are wanting to lead you. Show the world the real you, full moon in Aquarius. Full moon in Aquarius is actually uh, it's Leo energy. Um, the full moon in Aquarius is Leo energy. So that is really, I always like to think of that kind of as being... Um, it's almost eclipse-like in nature because you have uh, the sun in the energy of the sun, which is Leo, and then you have the moon in its fullness in that sign, and um, uh, well, in Aquarius, the moon in Aquarius, but the sun in Leo. But the point is you have very strong solar and lunar energies coming together um, outside of an actual eclipse energy. So it does feel like that sometimes to me. Um, the full moon in Leo season always feels especially strong. Um, and that could also be because of, of my own connection with those energies. But the show the world the real you, it's not a time to shrink back. It's not a time to be a shrinking violet. It's not a time to shut up. It's not a time to dim your light. It's not a time to dim yourself down. It's not a time to try to move with the crowd or the group. It's time for you to, to fly your freak flag. <laughs> it's time for you to be exactly who the fuck you came here to be because that's how you're actually changing the world. This is why so often in, 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 the, in, in, in the old world, as I like to call it, um, they used to like to get everyone to kind of be the same because there's power in connecting to your divine blueprint. There's power in owning who you are and who you came here to be at this time divinely. There's such power in that, such power. If you do nothing but be yourself <laughs> as a divine being, it's powerful. It's powerful. It's time to take action. New moon. Ooh, that's a lot of cards. Um, yeah. It's time to take action. New moon in Aries and prosperity lies ahead. New moon in Taurus. So some of you, it's like as we play out the end of this uh, astrological year and we head towards the spring equinox and the new moon in Aries and even into Taurus season, you're you're going to be out of this cycle. That's why it's so dark. So we're in January. So we have you have like what another two three months until Aries season, um, four months until uh, Taurus season. Just under three months. Just under four months. So in the next three to four months, um, this is going to be over. And, and this is why the energy right now is gaining momentum. What's coming out at the bottom is the new moon and cancer that you and your loved ones are safe. So if you have um, if you have fear surrounding walking away from this cycle because of what it means in terms of um, your security when it comes to if you have a family, your home, and all of that, this card is coming out to let you know that you are, you are, um, well, I was going to say provided for. So that's one thing you are provided for, you are protected and you have the, you have the, um, you have the protection of the divine mother on your side. You have mother earth. This is why all of these energies keep coming out for me to, for you to know that you're not alone. You know, it's like she sent her emissaries. This is a big word for me right now, but they keep giving me it's like the trees the rocks the animals the the ocean the rivers the streams the land everything that here everything around you is actually here to support you right now so make sure you're tuning in even if it's only in meditation make sure you're tuning in to the power of all of the resources that are here for you at this time um but you are protected you and your loved ones in this transition you're safe Okay, um, this is new moon in Cancer. By the time Cancer season rolls around, which is what, June, June of this year, um, this uh, cycle will not only be closed, but you would have moved forward 
entirely. You would have gotten over the hurdle that you couldn't um, two times before. So this is a this is this is like Shea Sager said in that song. This is the last time. This is the last time. There's no going back to this cycle. You will close it out this time. You will walk through the proverbial door that closes entirely on this cycle. And the other card that came out was it's a time for healing. So in this period of time, you're being told you're still in that healing method. Remember I said also uh, one of the energies that was coming out in the beginning was that um, some of you are, um, it's like you're not quite ready to go because there's still things you have to tie up in your physical reality or maybe even mentally and emotionally, you're not 100% ready to actually make the move even though you know it's inevitable. It's because there's still somewhere in the cycle where healing is required, maybe for you, maybe with the other, the other people involved, maybe specifically with the energy that wants to return to keep you stuck, you know, Take it as it resonates, depending on your story. But you should know that this is a time for healing. For some of you, um, new love will be entering in, in this period. This is this karmic cycle was keeping you out of real intimacy with another person, with a partner, romantically speaking. Um, and this cycle, as it closes, is opening the door for that too. Okay, so... Be very aware in this Mercury retrograde of these energies that want to return to you and people who come who come into your reality who remind you too much of toxic people from your past. And I'm not talking about the obvious toxic traits because at this point I don't think y'all can even would even entertain that. I'm talking again about somebody coming into your life who, I don't know, maybe your ex was an engineer who uh, who loved to eat burgers and strawberry milkshake and uh, like to do it on a Thursday and all of a sudden, this is just random shit, all of a sudden this person comes into your reality and then you, you, you come to find out that this is the case. Pay attention to details like that because it may seem like, oh, this is so serendipitous, but some of these things, are they're not. But your own intuition will tell you this. Your own sense of discernment will tell you this. Um, but pay attention in the Mercury retrograde because um, naturally these energies come up because it's a testing time for us uh, to help us to rise. But also these, uh, these karmic energies love to um, hold on even more during Mercury retrograde and some of them like to do shysty shit in the shadow for that purpose. So um, yeah, just be aware of that. I think, I think that's all. Um, I just want to check out, uh... but yeah, you have love coming. You have love that is going to enable you to uh, celebrate, celebrate love and to celebrate yourself. Many of you have never known what it's like to be in a situation or in a relationship where you are actually celebrated and not simply tolerated. And this is part of the energy that for some of you, it's here for you to overcome, like um, that belief that it's not possible for you to be celebrated. Not only is it possible for you to be celebrated, but it's like, it, it pretty much is your birthright. You were sent here to love. That is part of your cosmic experience as a being, and especially as a divine being. So you are here to be celebrated. You're here to be celebrated just as much as you celebrate other people. And it's time for you to move into a new cycle where that becomes a reality. So be ready to be celebrated. It may not feel like that's happening right now, but this is what's coming forward. You know, there's new energy coming forward, energy that inspires, energy that incites passion with this Aries energy, energy that uh, that sees your value and helps you to increase in it. I tell people all the time, the word appreciate means that if someone appreciates you, it means that they're helping you to grow in your light and your value. Their presence in your life makes you better. 
this is what is coming for you. And for many of you, um, in order for that to happen, you have to close the door on something um, or, or someone or, or people or energies where you were not celebrated, you were simply tolerated. You know, there's no more of that. There's no more of that. And in this transition, you are safe and you are supported because you're doing the right thing divinely for yourself and for everyone involved. Because, and I'm going to close out with this, but I tell people this all the time, okay? If you are in a karmic situation, even if you have not done shysty stuff, you're still a person who has operated from your woundedness. You probably have not loved a person in a karmic situation in the way they need to be loved. Whether you've tried or not, it doesn't matter. Have you loved that person the way that person needs to be loved? And the answer to that is probably no, because a lot of the time what we're doing is overcompensating for our own wounds because the whole energy of the situation is wounded. So when you walk away from a situation and you choose yourself, because you finally realize you are worthy of being celebrated and you are worthy of the highest form of love, what you're actually doing is opening the door for those people to have that too that you're walking away from. Because as much as they may be karmic in your reality, you are karmic in theirs too. Even if you haven't done the shysty shit, to be in a karmic cycle, you have to somehow be karmic too, to those individuals or to that individual. So what you're doing when you close out a karmic cycle is you're giving them an opportunity to close out a karmic cycle too. And indeed, you are closing out one for them. You're closing out the one with you. So know this, like loving yourself is loving your neighbor. It is loving your neighbor because if you love yourself and you walk away from a situation and what we should be recognizing is that I am not equipped to love you in the way that you need to be loved. And you're certainly not equipped. <laughs> the flame just went up. And you're certainly not, from my candle, and you're certainly not equipped to love me the way I need to be loved. So let's leave. Let's go in our own direction so we both can find the love we deserve. You know? So anyway, that's what I have for you guys. I hope this reading was helpful and insightful. It's been a pleasure reading for you as always. Welcome to my newest subscribers. Welcome to those of you who are returning. Um, thank you for your support. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your subscribes. Um, thank you to those of you who are led to uh, leave donations or to message me. Um, all of my information is always going to be in the description box below, but I'm going to love you and leave you guys. I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, you know, wherever you are in the world, whatever day this reading is timeless. And when it finds you, it's when it's meant to find you. So until next time, be well.